I'm Abby Landy and this is my story. I'd done two years of my law degree. I was just working in a bar of an evening while I was, you know, studying. My understanding of HIV was just the preconceived, you know, ideas and misconceptions that a lot of people have and just thought I better do a sexual health check. It was, you know, time to do a routine one anyway. In Australia, an estimated 2,600 people are unaware that they are HIV positive. Many have underestimated their perception of risk and in fact have forgotten their actual risk event which may have occurred up to five to ten years previously. So I woke up one morning with cold sores on my lips which I'd, I'd never had cold sores before and I was just feeling really sort of really run down and really crook. The cold sores didn't go away, um, just kept getting worse and worse and I was having like fairly severe flu-like symptoms, feeling really achy. I got to a point where I was, you know, not able to get out of bed. I was just really crook. Over the last couple of years in Australia, 30% of all new diagnoses occurred late. This means the CD4 cell count at the time of diagnosis was less than 350 cells per microliter. This is moderate immune damage when conditions such as shingles recurrent bacterial pneumonia or tuberculosis could occur. One in six diagnoses had a CD4 cell count less than 200 cells per microliter. This is advanced severe immune damage and this is when AIDS defining conditions will occur. So I went back to the doctor a couple of times, firstly because the cold sores just weren't going away. I had a rash that started on my arm and I fell asleep and woke up a couple of hours later and it had spread all over my body. And so at that point I was really freaking out and thinking it's probably something quite serious. So I had my friend drive me to emergency and they gave me an antihistamine, monitored me for a couple of hours and uh, sent me home. I had presented twice to a GP, I'd been to the emergency room and it was never even suggested. I didn't actually think that's what it could possibly be. That was, you know, too horrible to be real. Um, but I went back and asked the doctor, you know, can you, can you run an HIV test? And she said, look, it's probably not necessary. You know, you're a heterosexual young woman. Uh, the chances of you contracting HIV are very, very, very slim. In 2015, over 50% of all late diagnoses occurred in people who reported heterosexual sex as a transmission risk factor. 40% occurred in people from Sub-Saharan Africa. 30 to 40 percent occurred from people from Southeast Asia and we mustn't forget our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who also experience late HIV diagnosis. And I remember walking into the doctor's room and seeing her face and I could just you know I could detect that she was she was upset she was visibly distressed I said look Abby I'm so sorry but it looks like you've tested positive for HIV and after that it's sort of it's all a bit of a blur really um, we spoke a little bit about, you know, it's not, it's not a death sentence, um, but I don't think I was capable of taking much in at that point. Yeah, so it was horrifying, really. We miss opportunities to test for HIV when people with HIV-indicated conditions visit their healthcare professional. An HIV test is not offered either because the symptoms or condition are not recognised as a possible HIV-indicated condition or because the healthcare professional and the patient do not perceive a possible HIV transmission risk. But if you see someone with shingles, severe treatment resistant psoriasis or seborrheic dermatitis, recurrent bacterial pneumonia, oral or esophageal candidiasis, tuberculosis or a new diagnosis of hepatitis B or C, lymphoma, anal cancer, unexplained thrombocytopenia, or a sexually transmitted infection. Consider testing for HIV, regardless of perceived risk. So going to see the specialist, he kind of said, you know, it's really manageable. Your lifespan will be normal. Um, you've got many options for treatment. You don't need to start right away. You can if you want. You are in a position to lead a normal life because we've got it early. Treatments are good now. They're available. That was a big part of me coming to terms with, you know, what it meant to be living with this virus. I have a partner, I didn't want him to be at risk, um, and with treatment, you know, it's now been established that we're untransmissible. And if you've got an undetectable viral load, um, 
you can't transmit the virus. The symptoms I had are fairly, um, fairly typical seroconversion illness symptoms. If I hadn't insisted on getting the test, it would have gone by undiagnosed. And that, you know, that is a terrifying thought because it's when HIV is undiagnosed and untreated, that's when it does damage. Why not test? If someone's sexually active, they are at risk. You know, HIV is human, you know, it, it doesn't discriminate. Um, so for anyone who's sexually active, it is a potential. Early diagnosis gives people the opportunity to deal effectively with HIV, start treatment and prevent onward transmission. Don't assume your patients aren't at risk. Consider HIV.